Welcome back, welcome back guys and thank you very much for staying with the show up to so far. If you just joined, this is 10 for Life. We are continuing with analytical geometry, grade 12, but even grade 11s can still benefit from this show by just watching. There's a lot of grade 11 content that we touch on as we are busy assisting grade 12s with this. Remember this show is proudly brought to you by Liberty and you can always get at it on uh, this channel from 5 o'clock until 6 o'clock every weekday. Even tomorrow we will be available to give you even more quality content on this awesome topic topic that we are dealing with now. We are continuing to our last question, which is a question that comes from Hashmita. Let's check the question. Right, nice question indeed, Hashmita. Very, very interesting question. It's an analytical geometry integrating circles as well as equations of straight lines. So let's just jump right into it and see what the question is asking us to do, guys. It says here there is a particular diagram, and in this diagram, the circle with the center M cuts the y axis at point A. We can actually see where's point A if you go further down. You'll see that point A right there at the bottom. Okay, cool. And point C with the given coordinates 0 and 8. And the positive x-axis at D it also passes at point D. The line through C, right, the line through C, and N also cuts at B, right, and MB is parallel to the x-axis. And here's something very interesting again, MN is perpendicular to the line CB. Very powerful indeed. It's important for you guys to always read the love letter. There's a love letter given to you, read the love letter and see what is on the love letter that doesn't appear on the sketch because more often than not, you miss important information if you don't do that transfer. So again, we just noticed that something very important has been mentioned there. That the line MN, let me change my pen, right? Yes, we are using a pen, but you want to use a white pen indeed. Yes, the line, the line MN is actually perpendicular to CB. So MN is perpendicular to CB. I'm going to put the 90 degree angle there. We need that. It's going to help us a lot when we are continuing with our analysis here. Right, let's go to the first question. It says we need to work out the gradient of BC. Determine the gradient of the line BC. An easy question indeed. The gradient of the line BC is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. You need to get these kinds of questions, guys, and make sure that you can be able to work them out. You don't need the coordinates of B and the coordinates of C. You just need any two coordinates on that line are enough. You don't need B and C specifically. Any two coordinates on that particular line, since those lines, those points are calling that they lie on the same line, they are enough. In this case, I'm going to use C and N without B, since I don't know what the story is with B. And and C will be enough. Let's work with them. So 8 minus 5 there. I'm going to have 8 minus 5 divided by 0 minus 3. 8 minus 5 is 3. 3 divided by negative 3 is actually giving us a gradient of negative 1. That's the gradient of BC. It is equal to negative 1. Nice and easy. Very nice. So let's move on to the next one. The second question here is saying to us, uh, let's see. Okay, good. Remember that this is perpendicular and we have worked out that the gradient of this line BC is actually equal to negative 1. We need that information. All right. Determine the equation of the line MN. Oh, awesome stuff. Now, MN is perpendicular to BC. So we need to first of all find the gradient and use the point N to work out the equation of MN. So I'm simply going to say um, the gradient of MN times the gradient of AB is equal to negative 1. So that means negative 1 times the gradient of AB is equal to negative 1. So the gradient of not AB, sorry, this is not AB, it's actually um, BC, BC. Yes, let's fix that. That's BC, not, not AC. BC, yes, the gradient of MN times the gradient of BC. Let's fix that so that we actually can see uh, what is actually happening here. Very nice stuff, yes. MN is um, what we are looking for, yes. Gradient of MN multiplied by negative 1 is negative 1. Therefore, the gradient of MN is going to be positive 1. Quite easy. Right, now Y is MX plus C. So the Y value I'm going to use here is 5. The gradient is 1. The Y value is 5 when the X value is 3 plus C. And let's simplify further. This is going to be 3. So you're basically going to get 2SC. Therefore, the equation is Y equals X plus 2. Quite nicely. Now, this actually gives us a lot of very interesting information when we want to work out with what is happening here. Now, if you go on and you look at the last question, they are asking us a very simple question, guys, which can be done in several, several ways. Right. 
Remember, we found the equation of this line as y equals to x plus 2. Right, and we also know that this line is perpendicular to this one. And in the beginning, we were told that this is basically parallel to the x-axis. I don't know if this is going to be necessary or not, but let's see what we need. We need the coordinates of m. So this is a very simple question indeed. The coordinates of m in this question are, since the m value lies on the y-axis, it's clear that the x-coordinate is 0, but we don't know what the y-coordinate is. If you apply the y-intercept on the equation of the straight line that we're dealing with, the y-intercept of this, when x is 0, the y-value is going to be 2. Clearly, the coordinate of m, there must be 0, is to 2, because c represents the y-intercept of the straight line we are dealing with. Therefore, the coordinates of m are simply um, 0 and uh, equal to 2. So it's a very nice question, not complicated, it's easy and straightforward. Unfortunately, Hashmita wanted us to end here. If they wanted you to work out the equation of this particular circle, what, we, what could we do? Because we've got an extra 30 seconds or so, I can actually add and say to you, if you wanted the equation, we would say x to the a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared using the coordinates of uh, m which is the center according to the question you'll then have x minus 0 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals to the radius now the radius is the distance from 2 to 8 you can see that from 2 to 8 you're just moving 6 units so 6 squared will just simply give you 36. Nice question indeed. If you also clean this up, maybe somebody might want to say, what is x uh, minus 0? That's x squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 36. It's a very nice question indeed. Thank you very much for that question, Nishimita. I enjoyed myself thoroughly today, guys. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you to Liberty. A big thank you to all of you for watching the program. A big thank you to our producers and our production staff for making this possible. Never forget to keep sending us your questions. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.